I want to get back into the nine to five. Talk about work life, that nine to five hustle. Obviously, you know, most people have nine to five jobs. And you know, I feel like the nine to five struggle is something we all can relate to. So as you guys can see, I live here in Miami. The stuff that happens in the city, bro, this is not okay. Like, man, this is, like guys, honestly, I want to move out. Oh shit, sorry. I want to move out not because I hate Miami or it's a bad city. This city is just so dark, man. It's just, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know why people act the way they do. I've met every stereotype of evil person. Like the, the guy that likes little kids. I cannot even say that on YouTube. The most fucked up type of people. It's like it's, it's crazy. Like back to back, you know, just every person I meet, it just seems like they got some like skeletons in their closet. I just don't under, I don't get what's wrong with the city. And you know, working in such a chaotic city, I am not gonna lie. I'm in my wits and you know I'm just I'm tired. You know I'm 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 over it. Now don't get me started on the money here, people. People working here made me realize I don't want to do this stuff the rest of my life. The amount of wealth that's present in the city is not okay. People have Lambos at like 18, sometimes 16. People are out driving their mega yacht on a casual Sunday. People are out out on their you know, 200 foot, you know, 200, whatever the fuck, penthouse, chilling, normal. People are coming in with $70,000 watches, normally. And you know, I always would ask, yo, what do you do? Like what, I'm here working my ass off, grinding every single day. I'm here 60, sometimes 70 hours a week. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not living my life. Like you are my friend, like, like these guys will come in in suits, you know, I'll hear them on the phone. Yeah, you know, man, I just flew in from New York, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be going to LA next week and then I'm gonna fly back to Switzerland, then I'll come back to Miami and I'm gonna do it. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here. And you're traveling the world. Apparently you own a business. Like, what business are you doing? Like, I would always ask and they would always just give me the same, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, I don't even know what they would say. Just <sighs> working, I realized most people just don't give a fuck about you. You know, when you're just a worker, people with money, they don't give a damn. Like they walk in and they, to you, they're like an NPC. You know, you, like, you don't exist in the world. To you, it's just give me my coffee, give me my drink, give me my whatever, whatever you do, give me my, my money, hurry up. Just give me, give me what I need because I have to live my life, NPC. You know, at first it kind of made me mad. I guess my pride, you know, I got a lot of pride in myself. I take a lot of pride in who I am. You know, I don't want, I hate feeling like I'm being downplayed. I don't know. That's just who I am. Eventually, hopefully one day, I'll be the guy, well, not the guy coming in, um, the fucking boss and give me my gun. I don't want to be one of those guys, but hopefully one day I can be the guy with the money and someone asks me, yo, what do you do? I will tell them how I did it and explain. Bro, these guys don't give a damn about me. I'm like, yo, I'm trying to get, I don't want to be doing this coffee like this guy. Bro, I was working my ass off. Yo, how do I get, like, what do you do? Uh, you know, just, you know, invest. Bro, I don't want to hear that right now. Help me get, help me. Help me. <sighs> how do I explain, how do I break this down? My friend, my friend, my friend. For the first year, I worked in Brickell. Brickell, Miami. If you haven't heard of Brickell, well, I'm here to tell you. Brickell is no funny, imaginary place. No, it's a real place. Filled with millionaires, sometimes even billionaires. Guys, I've seen a Bugatti. I, I'll put the picture, I'll put the little video. Here it is. I saw that. That is a 3.5 plus million dollar car. Brooklyn is a very fascinating but real place filled with just extraordinary people. You know, I've seen people with, you know, like I said, Rolexes, you know, uh, Van Cleef, I think like $70,000 bracelets, bank rolls, you know, just money. I'm working around the most top tier type of individuals. You know, it's one thing to work, you know, in a small town and you know, the people come in and oh, he has, you know, he has a nice little BMW, cool. I, you know, I dealt with that. That's, that, that's one thing. I'm seeing Lamborghinis, Porsches, Ferraris, Bugattis, you name it. Like everything in the book. And bro, I'm working my ass off. Man, I was waking up at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. to get to work. And you know, that would be sometimes where I'm like five minutes late because I'll have to be at work at five. So since I wake up at four, but I didn't really wake up before, I wake up at like 4.40, and I only have 20 minutes to one, get up, get ready, brush my teeth, do my hair, all type of stuff, and then get there. So like sometimes I was like five minutes late. Mind you, it is 5 a.m. in the morning. So 5.05, we open for another hour. 
Ty, why were you late, man? You know, if you're late again, I'm going to write you up. And you know, if you get wrote, I'm going to have to like, reduce your pay. You know, if you get do that, I'm going to have to get fired. I'm tired. And this dude is a billionaire. People with money are happy. And they actually get to live life. You know, the working class, we don't, we don't get to really live life. You know, I'm not trying to say be sad or, you know, life isn't worth it. You know, of course, live life. The working class, people like us, we work to live. You know, the people at the top, they, they live to work. They get up happy. They get to live. We have to wake up to go to work just to survive to live. I guess it's backwards. I'm not gonna lie. There's been a couple times, a couple instances where, bro, this, these assholes will come in because they think they're hot shots or what. I don't know. They got money. Cool, bro. But like, bro, God, we're both human. Like, calm down. I'm not your servant. I get like I work here and like I'm so the customer's always right, whatever the fuck. But like, I'm not about to treat me like I'm a bottom class citizen. I'm so sorry. Like, you know, jobs really just don't care about you. You know, I had to really come to that realization because, you know, my first job, man, I put in so many hours, so many hours. For what I was doing, bro, like, I should think you've been getting paid way more. But regardless, my second job, my job now, I think I've been there three months, three months now, and I've already got my pay reduced and I'm trying to reduce hours. You cannot count on jobs. You know, 2024 is the year of truth. Everybody's getting exposed. You know, people are realizing that we can't rely on the system. It's not working. Like, how is rent going to go up and then pay going to go down or stay the same? Like, what? How is that even possible? How is that even legal? How? How is that? That should be a crime. I don't know how some people live like that. I don't. I don't get it. You know, I've always been like, in my head, I've always thought I always want to make sure I'm in control, no matter what. Nobody can take nothing away from me. Obviously, you know, even having a YouTube channel, it can get demonetized. Things can happen. But that's why you gotta diversify your incomes, all type of stuff. Like, I've always just had this instilled mindset. And working for two years and having the most, the, the littlest shit just happen, and oh, to ever start reducing pay, oh, this is gonna happen, or so, boom, or if you're late again, we're gonna fire you. Goodbye. Like, all the, the little just jabs at me just really just solidified the fact that I cannot rely on a job. I don't want to rely on a job. It's not, it's, bro, I've seen people that's working for 20 years just get fired because of layoffs, layoff season, or the company got slow, or he spent too much money. Like, I don't want to have to depend on somebody. I, I, I think I'm smart. I think I'm a smart person. You know, when I was in school, I was in Pathways. I don't know if Pathways is like everywhere, still even a thing, I don't know. But Pathways is basically for like, I guess the smart kids or the gifted or whatever. Was that stupid? They called it a gifted class. No, the smart, the smart people, they had straight A's. No, I was part of the, they were the gifted smarts. I promise, I know it. But you know, I think I'm a pretty smart person. So like, I, I don't want to depend on somebody else that I think I'm like, I'm not saying I'm smarter than, you know, the, you know, other people, but I don't want to rely on somebody else because what if they what if they make a wrong decision that I wouldn't have done? You know, I hear a lot of people say, you know, money is the root of all evil or don't chase money, it's gonna corrupt you or something, but you know, to me, I don't think money is evil. You know, I don't think money is the inherent evil thing. I think people are evil. Like, just the same way guns aren't evil, they aren't an evil thing, we make them evil by using them to do evil acts. You know, gun can be used for something good. You know, it can be used to protect. Guns don't have to be a bad thing, but we just portray normal things as bad. Like, money, why does money have to be bad? Money, to me, brings, ha like, happiness and freedom of your life. Like, you don't have to... When you have money, you can give back. Like let's say someone, God forbid, but let's say it's like something bad happens, or, you know, a car accident or your car gets a flat or you get sick. Things happen in life. If you got money, you can resolve those things easier. It might not be 100%, but it's a lot easier than not having any money. Like, imagine like you get sick and you have zero. What do you do? Oh, you gotta go to the hospital, but the hospital bill is $5,000, but you have debt. What are you gonna, like, you, you're done. You know, at some point, you know, I guess, you know, you can pray to God, but at some point you have to take your life into your own hands and, you know, of course, have faith, believe, higher, you know, power, universe, whatever you believe in. But you gotta realize this is life. You gotta take control of your life at the same time. Have faith, but work behind the faith. You know, you can't just have faith with no work. You know, it doesn't work, it doesn't work that way. It's been a very interesting, it's been a very interesting journey. For some of you guys, this might be your first video. If it is, hi, I'm Ty. But, um, you know, I moved here three years ago, and I'm only 22. So I moved here, well, this math doesn't make sense, but I moved here when I was 20. I turned 23 in a month, so, or two months. 
I'm three months. I turned 23 in January. It's October. Is it, is it three or two months? I don't know. If you count October, I turned 23 in January. So I've been here since I was pretty much a boy. And I've learned so much, you know. I just, to look back and from everything that I've gone through, like when I was homeless, I guess that, is, that has happened, which is crazy. Like I look back and it seems like it was a blip, but that was like four months, three or four months of my, of my life. I just had to be in a car. You know, I worked out one job for a minute. Uh, I met so many different interesting people. Like I met this guy named Casey Hustle. Um, apparently he has like a hundred million dollars or something. I don't know, crazy money. I, met, I also met Fresh from Fresh and Fit. I met I met um Mike Majek. I don't know how he's name the guy from Logan Paul. Mike Majek. Other celebrities, Sneeko. I met a lot of people, and I just realized they're they're so normal. They're just like me. They come in tall, normal, just. And I realized like, I can do that. I am doing that. I'm doing it right now. Like I'm doing. I'm not doing anything different. I'm not anybody special. I don't have to be anybody special. I'm me. Like that's all I have to be. But working here and having just people come to you and you just meet different people and hear their stories and you know they don't really talk about how they're making their money because you know I don't I don't know I guess they're just too prideful in it. But you know just hearing their, their interesting stories about how they live their life it makes you it just motivates you to just want to keep going. Like I don't want to work the rest of my life. Like a lot of I, 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 it's like some people come in like, I want you to get go to college get a job like. That sounds cool and all, like, you know, I would go to college, you know, I'm like, I'm not opposed to college. I don't want to be one of those guys, don't go to college, I hate college, I, I don't. But just for me, college, I don't, I, like I said, I'm a very independent person. I just, I know what I want, I know who I want to be, I know who I am. Most importantly, I know who I am. And who I am is tied in, the guy that wants to be free, that wants to travel, wants to spread good, a good message, good positive energy, and just love, which is why I've been so happy and confident lately. Um, I just, I feel so so aligned with who I want to be. You know, I'm just, I'm slowly transforming into that person. Like, when I was a kid, I used to always just imagine being on camera and talking to an audience and spreading love and just joy. And I'm slowly, I'm do I mean, I guess I'm doing it, but I want to do it on, you know, a grand scale where everybody sees it and just, just love. Just bring back love. Now, 2024, like I said, is a year of truth. It's just a lot of, a lot of exposing, a lot of bad things. But I hope, you know, I feel like in 2025, I hope it's a year of just transformation, where we just go back and revert back to just the good old times. And hopefully, I'm a part of it. Hopefully, I'm just. Hopefully, I'm a leader of it. I want to be. Man, I just, I just want to be a beacon of hope and love and someone people can look up to and just I don't want to say admire or adore that's not what I want but somebody that you just I don't know just I want to be like that guy what's wrong with him you know he's, you know he's attractive in shape good hair you know funny I hope you know I hope I'm witty you know and just a good person he loves now what's what's there to hate? I know I'm really gassing myself up right now, but I'm really just expressing how I feel right now. I guess I need to end the video. Let me uh, let me go before we start crying, guys. Um, you know, no toxic masculinity. I don't cry much, but we're gonna start. We're gonna get the tears going if we just keep this going. So, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, you know what you must do. I don't not. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say it because if I have to say it, then like if I have to say it, don't even do it. Right? Just whatever. So. You know, do what you gotta do. It's down in the description. Um, I do, but I will say, I do have a membership. If you wanna follow it, there's a link down in the description. Honestly, I don't know what it's for. Um, I'm gonna like do some more research and see what I can do with the memberships. I think I can like post videos early and like just to members and then, I don't know, we're gonna see. So yeah, I might do that in the future. Um, but thank you so much for watching. Um, love you guys so much. See you in the next one. Love ya. Peace. Goodbye.